Hello, everyone. Welcome to Mostly Football, episode 11. Tonight, I got Nate with me. We're talking a little bit of hockey. We're talking a little Brittany Griner, ooh, Russia. And also, we're talking Zach Wilson. You know what else we're doing? We're cramming two whole divisions into one show. That's right, we missed a week. We're back, we're ready for you. So say hello, my friends, because here is Mostly Football. Boom. And we're in the house. Nate, what is up, sir? How you been? How was your weekend? It's been a while. Did you get a chance to recharge the batteries? I was always, always. That's one thing I do when we don't show up. I try to get, you know, a little bit recharged. You have a particular look tonight. I love it. For those just listening, Nate is wearing brand new frames. Very fancy to go with his polo. Not polo. Is that a polo or a full button? It's it's polo. Polo shirt underneath the vest. Very uh, sexy Carlton style. Very (laughs) fresh modern. uh, Very Stefan, if you will. Only Stefan ditched the glasses. This guy, he's still sexy with the glasses on. But, uh, yeah, it's good to see you, man. I'm digging the look. I'm digging the shack background. Is there a particular reason for the shack background? Uh, shack, you know. Wasn't he in your area recently? Yes, he was. Apparently, he was, I think it was downtown Carrollton. He just handed out money. He was spotted. I was like, man, I missed that opportunity. Shack in the house. We missed a whole week, so we were not able to congratulate the Colorado Avalanche on their Stanley Cup win. Uh, you know, big round of applause for the guys in Colorado taking on the Tampa Bay Lightning, the two time defending Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay Lightning. Uh, I should say, here we are. We got the article here from Stephen Wino. Great link from uh, Stephen Wino here on the Baltimore Sun. The Colorado Avalanche are back atop hockey's mountain after dethroning the two time defending champions. Behind a goal and an assist from Nathan McKinnon, the Avalanche won the Stanley Cup for the third time in franchise history and first in more than two decades by beating the Tampa Bay Lightning 2-1 to in Game 6 of the final Sunday night. Nate, did you get a chance to watch any of this hockey game? I did not. I did. I, I, caught, a, I caught like the highlights, but I didn't actually get to watch the actual game. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Uh, Plus, there I think it was all this was all my attention was on the finals around when this was happening. So, yeah, then this I think it was, yeah, I get that. I think it happened uh, like a few games of this happened yeah, after they were, the between, they, were, they were in between the finals games, but you know when the finals was on, like I don't really pay attention to much else. Fair. You know, totally fair. I like the finals too. Uh, what is latest in basketball? You think Durant's going back to the Warriors? <laughs> no. Um, at this point, Brooklyn's asking for a lot. Um, and what they're asking for, I don't really see. I think this this year is probably one of the better NBA drafts. Um, a lot of a lot of teams made a, a lot of great picks, and a lot of those picks are actually panning out to what they should they should be. So I, I don't think there's gonna be a lot of teams breaking their necks to get Kevin Durant. I mean, he he's North of 30, he had the the Achilles injury. So we'll see. We'll see if someone's willing to break the bank and give up their future for him. But, um, but I don't know. Kyrie, Kyrie's looking to be heading to the Lakers. But we'll see how that play out. Really? I think, a lot of, I think a, yeah, I think a lot of this is going to end up going toward, like, into the season. So. Damn, Kyrie Irving in L.A. with all the boys. Oh, boy. Don't mean nothing. If they back can't united, healthy, back reunited with the king. If they can't stay healthy, it don't mean nothing. That's true. He has to be on the court. That, that too. I mean, but Anthony Davis is he he's the he's the key piece to all of that. And he hadn't played a full season since he's been in Los Angeles. So and I wonder still too, I mean, Kyrie was going through all that stuff in New York with the COVID, uh, you know, not having the vaccine. So is he going to go through the same thing in LA? No, I don't think so. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Well, yeah, for sure. That's going to be exciting to follow. 
Um, yeah, I think Kendrick Perkins said that if KD goes back to the Warriors, his legacy is tarnished. But it's like people already have their mind made up on KD. You know, it's not like this any particular move from here on out is going to change what they think about him. I don't. I don't think. I don't think he's. I don't. I don't think he's. Go, I don't think KD is going to the Warriors because I don't think the Warriors need him. Now that they're getting healthy, all their young guys are getting healthy. So I, I think. I think the Warriors are going to be like, ah, uh, no, nah, they they're going to say no on him. <laughs> Damn, yeah. shutting the door, shutting the door on KD. Yeah, I think it's going to be a no for. Him. I think it's going to be a no for him. I mean, as much as they would like it to happen, but I think it's going to be a no for him. You know. I just want all the MFers out there to know that there is an official favorite fighter of the Mostly Football podcast, and his name is Israel Adesanya, the style bender. Dude, this is this is uh, this is Anderson Silva reincarnated. <laughs> I just got to put it there. Like he definitely he, he has the he has the charisma, he has the talent, the skill, he has it all. And I, I like I said, barring injury. He he can he can he can hold this title for as long as he wants. I don't really? see anyone. I don't see anyone that's going to beat this kid no time soon. This guy has it all. I mean, he's you know he's no uh, Idris Elba, but he is he's a good looking guy for sure. He has a great accent, like an accent that you just don't hear very often uh, in the mainstream, per se. Uh, the things that he's interested in, the things that he talks about, if you've heard him on like any different podcast, whether it's Rogan or I think he was on Andrew Schultz, another great podcast, you know, just a, a fun dude to listen to. You could tell like you could just chill in the living room with him all night long and play video games and just discuss rabbit holes and the Matrix and whatnot. And then right. he also goes into the octagon and beats the hell out of guys. And every time I'm thinking, oh, no way that this skinny dude is going to be this guy. I mean, surely this guy with all his muscles and meat is going to knock out this skinny Israel Adesanya. And by golly, by the end of those three rounds, usually, he's usually a full fight kind of guy. But, uh, well, no, I shouldn't say that, actually. He's finished his plenty of guys. But uh, it's just unreal. You know, that it, it kind of in a Nate Diaz kind of way, like the way the skinny guys are built, he's not really going to give you a one-punch knockout, but... You'll get punches and bunches. You'll get plenty of variations in the strikes. And he's so fun to watch, whether it's striking or on the ground. And then after he beats you up, you get stuff like this. Israel Adesanya, quote, Glenn Maxwell was supplying kids for all these effing pedos, right? I mean. Yeah. Hey, you can't, you can't mess with that. Who else is talking about Glenn Maxwell in the UFC world right now? No one. I'll tell you I don't what. think no one's talking about her at the moment. I know there's a documentary that's been released about her. UFC champion, according to Thema Newsroom. <laughs> uh, I think it's the MMA Newsroom. I'm just reading it wrong here. UFC champion Israel Adesanya is calling for authorities to release the names of the elites linked to Ghislaine Maxwell and Jeffrey Epstein's decades of sexually abusing young girls. There are reports that Maxwell had a list of the people for whom Epstein allegedly obtained women for sexual encounters, and many expect the list will include the names of famous Hollywood elites, as well as business giants and politicians. But this list has never been made public by prosecutors. During his comments on July 2nd, ahead of his UFC 276 win over opponent Jared Cannonier, Adesanya went off on a tangent demanding that the authorities release the names of the pedos on Maxwell's list. How do you say that? Pedos, pedos? I say pedos. Yeah. It's, it's, Glenn, it's teach his own. Yeah, right. Tomato, tomato, pedo. <laughs> uh, Glenn Maxwell was supplying kids for all these effing pedos, right? P pedos, pedos. Where's the list? Does that get swept under the rug? Do they not get any time for actually effing those kids, he said? That's right. They're not going to talk about that. Oh, there's video. I love it. I love video. Galen Maxwell just got put away for 20 years. So she was supplying kids for all these fucking pedos, right? Oh, beep. Where's the list? We're not 10 minutes in, is, shit. As that just gets like, I don't know. Weird that that got no coverage, but Johnny Depp and Andrew Great. Everywhere. Yeah. And Never I'm make like, money off this episode. Of, you know, <laughs> politicians. Sorry, and YouTube. And actors or whatever that they talked about. Does that get 
swept under the rug? Do they not get any time for actually fucking those kids? I love this guy. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Like, it's, that's weird that how that just doesn't compute with so me. So they gave her 20 years? Yeah. I think she's already, uh, I think she's already in suicide watch. So she's guilty of something. So where's the I'm air quoting people. Suicide watch. So she's guilty of something. Where's the, so where, where's this proof at? Where's the, where, what, where's what sent her to jail for 20 years? Where's the evidence, right? Uh, I think it's, I think it was the, uh, like mostly the women, um, testifying, like who were the victims? Well, hell, R. Kelly got 30. She got 20. Dude, the courts are actually giving these people what they deserve, huh? I don't know. The guards for Epstein got Nathan. <laughs> they got the back door. Like, ah, uh, good job. See you next time. Jesus. So, yeah, we'll see. But you wanted to talk about a another somewhat political issue in current events. Uh, <laughs> a very famous female basketball player is in the news. Famous. She's an idiot. She, she's famous AF, I would say. She's an idiot. That's what she is. I'm not gonna give her famous. She's an idiot. Okay. I'll bring it up here from CNN.com. Brittany Griner pleads guilty to drug charges in Russian court. Mm, mm, mm. So, so, so here's something I came across this week. So there's a video that I saw, and this chick was talking about if it was LeBron James, he'd have been home by now. No. LeBron James isn't a fucking idiot. Interesting. LeBron, LeBron James wouldn't have decided to take an illegal substance to another damn country. <laughs> okay? It is illegal. It's already illegal enough to be in these here United States and travel cross lines <laughs> with drugs in your car. That's illegal. <laughs> she went across the water. She went to a whole different country. Across the pond, as they say. You can't do that. You can't be stupid. And then when you get the consequences, now now you want to play a victim. Now everybody want to make her a martyr. No, she's an idiot. You can't go to someone else. That'd be like me going to your house and, and breaking your shit and breaking your rules. And then when I get kicked out, I get mad because I got kicked out. No. Uh -huh. You can't I don't know. Were see. you were you in a hurry while you were packing? I don't think you've ever been in a hurry while you were packing going to Russia before, Nate. So you don't know no. what it's like to forget you that you cannot, have here. You cannot intentionally break another country's laws and then cry victim when they hit your ass with them charges. Don't you, you know that. that when you break another country's laws, that means you're being wrongfully detained? <laughs> exactly. Do everybody like it's mine is most of the people in the in the black community who are like well she's being unfair no she's not that's what happens when you go to another country you go to another country and you break their laws she's from what i heard she's either looking at being released next week or sitting there for two years oh really yeah so i'm like that's your fault i don't feel bad for her and it, well, anyway, like the lady, she was like, well, if this is LeBron James, people don't, there's like the reason why she's still there is because the country doesn't value black women. First of all, okay, she could have been a white woman. If you go over to Russia, they don't care if you're black, white, Asian, Hispanic, they don't give a shit. If you go over to that country and you break those laws, your ass is going to deal with the consequences. And that's what happened with her. She was stupid. She brought whatever she brought over there, which is illegal in that country. And she got to deal with the consequences. It's just that simple. Like, and then, and then yesterday, this is shit that irritated me the most. So the, I don't know for those of you who don't know, the WNBA's All Star Game was yesterday. Oh wow! Right? <laughs> why every? Why everybody wore forty two for Brittany Griner? Hmm? Hmm. Why? Why are they? Why are they promoting this chick like she didn't do anything wrong? You broke a law in another country. And the thing is, is, is because, well, everyone's looking at Russia like, well, Russia started a war. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if they started a war or not. Listen, we have rules. Okay? We have laws. This ain't the United States where, oh, she's black. We're going to look the other way. No, 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 no. That's that's not happening. They're not looking the other way in these countries. So you got to deal with it. I mean, it's a, it's a similar narrative to when Shakara Richardson got punishment for yeah. You know, getting popped for weed before the Olympics, and then she was out. Exactly, exactly. It, like, and this is listen, I don't, I don't, 
I don't agree with it either. You know, I, I don't I don't think it should be a rule, but it is. <laughs> right. I don't I don't I don't agree with it, but you know what? Guess what? It's their laws. Yeah. It's that country's laws. You have to abide. Like if you come to my house, these are my it's my house. You have to abide by my rules. If I tell you take your shoes off at the front of the door, you take your shit off at the front of the door. If you refuse, then you gotta go. It's that simple. You can't you can't just walk into someone's house and just be like ah no you gotta follow the rules. So I hope they give her I hope they hit her ass for two years. <laughs> Teach her ass a goddamn lesson. Don't be stupid. <laughs> no, I'm gonna go to another country and, and break the law and then cry victim when I get caught. For real? What did you get? Well, whoever made that statement about this country not valuing black women to you is out of their mind. Well, I mean, she was, it to me. It was just a video. And oh, she, okay. they, what she was saying was, is that this country values. First of all, I think what she was implying is that this country values black men more than they do black women. And I'm like, are you serious? Her? After all the shit we just got through doing, you, uh, you, got, you got the audacity to say that? No. I don't think there's a I don't think there's a black male vice president. I don't think there's a black male uh, press secretary. I don't think there's no. a black male new Supreme Court justice. No, it's just it's just they're finding excuses to make to to not hold that woman accountable for what she did. And that's the thing is women are refusing to hold themselves accountable, and someone should be holding her accountable. And guess what? Russia's doing that. So, you know, I hope she I hope she doesn't have to do two years. But if they give her ass two years then you better she better learn russian well listen i don't know what the laws over there regarding marijuana and all that stuff are but i do know she's clearly not going to get like the fair treatment a russian citizen would get because she's a she's a, a bargaining chip like this is a time of war dude this was the worst time <laughs> to break the law in russia exactly. you exactly. you are a bargaining chip yes and you know what the fuck the thing is like you knew this going in, <laughs> like you knew this going in. Why? Like I'm, I'm just trying to figure out what possessed you. You understand if you drive across, if I drive from Texas <laughs> to Oklahoma with weed in my car, and I get pulled over, you know how much trouble I'm gonna be in. This ain't gonna be just your normal traffic stop. This is gonna be an issue. I should be crossing state lines, man. Yeah, you just cross state lines. She crossed an international border. <laughs> like, she was like, Into a country <laughs> that may be the most hostile in the world right now. She's like, fuck. She's like, fuck the state lines. I'm going international border. That's what I'm doing. Like, you got to be just dumb. I don't feel bad for her. I, I hope I hope she gets whatever they give her. And she and you at some point you gotta be like, Yeah, I'm an idiot. I shouldn't have did that. That's the thing. She's she's doing the idiot part, but not the yeah, I did that. <laughs> she's just playing dumb and being like, I had no idea. I was you, packing too fast. You were packing you packing. I don't I don't think I've ever had I don't think I've ever packed too fast and didn't know what I was packing. You know, it must have been in the, the pair of jeans I grabbed and I didn't even know it, type of thing. That, no, that, it was that in my be, bedazzled jeans. That would be like me. Packing and forgetting and forgetting that I have a gun and pack it, not in a secure case. That that would be stupid. That would be stupid on me. That 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 like that is your fault. That's still your responsibility to make sure you pack your shit correctly. That's your fault. You have to take responsibility. There's no excuses here. Oh, I was packing too fast. She just well, I'll tell you what. She's got old Biden in hot water too because she wrote him a letter. You know, all the all the reporters are asking about her at these press conferences. When's Brittany going to get out? You got Trevor Reed out. Why can't we get Brittany out? Joe Biden is. So <laughs> here's the thing. So the narrative that okay, we're almost 20 had, minutes in. I think we're good. So the narrative that everybody had for Donald Trump. Is the correct narrative for Joe Biden. <laughs> it's that simple. There's a reason why she's not home yet. She's not coming home until Joe Biden gives Vladimir Putin. Wait, 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 wait. We were talking about Joe Biden. We were talking about an old white guy with no connection to what we're feeling today. We're talking about Donald Trump, right? <laughs> no, that is Joe Biden. Sorry. Joe Biden. He, 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 Joe, I, I guarantee you, they want something big for Brittany Griner. They're going to bar, they're going to hold her ass until they give him, from what I heard, I don't think it's true, but. 
apparently there's like a guns dealer we have locked up here that they're wanting, but I don't know how true that is though. I don't really, I didn't check the source on that one. But at the end of the day, she she's a bargaining chip, and they're not letting her go until they get what they want. So I mean, have you heard? Of, if you've heard of Stranger Things, she's gonna get the strangest things. <laughs> and be, I I hope. What I've seen in movies about Russian prison is not actual real life because that's horrible. So let me, uh, I'll re actually read some of this article here from Anna Chernova on uh, CNN. Two time U.S. Olympic basketball gold medalist Brittany Griner has pleaded guilty to drug charges in a Russian court near Moscow. Her lawyers confirmed to CNN on Thursday. Griner, whom the U.S. State Department has classified as wrongfully detained, Faces up to 10 years in prison under the charge. Holy cow. 10 years. So they said, you, wait, so wait, so now the American people are saying, well, not American people, these assholes are saying she's wrongfully detained. That's been the narrative, yeah. The, uh, the press secretary has been coming out every day saying that she's been wrongfully detained. How? How was she wrongfully? Not, hey, two plus two equals five anymore, my friend. I, <laughs> two plus two does equal five. Like, fuck me, man. How how is she wrongfully detained? I'm trying to figure this out. I'm trying to wrap my brain around how you get wrongfully detained for bringing <laughs> Maybe drugs. Maybe planted it on her, but that wasn't what she said. You brought drugs into another country. She's already pleaded guilty, so I guess she's not wrongfully detained. You can't be wrongfully detained if you plead guilty. Because clearly, <laughs> that the Russian lawyer was like, "Hey, you should plead not." No, she knew she fucked up. The, yeah, they said something in Russian. She's like, that sounds good. They're like, ah, 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 we got there. This is so... The, the uh, wrong, that's, that's been a narrative about this whole thing is, well, she's been wrongfully detained. No, she's not. She was detained for bringing drugs into another country, and you are not going to sit here and say she was... No. <laughs> no, no, I'm sorry. That's on you. That's so on you. Supporters of the Phoenix Mercury player... Uh, have called for her release over fear she's being used as a political pawn, you think, in Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Griner's lawyers expect the court to take into account the 31-year-old athlete's guilty plea, wow, same age, and hope for leniency, Alexander Boykov and Maria Bologna Valina uh, told journalists Thursday. They're not, you're, you're not serious. You, so here, let me get this straight. So not only did you send one of your badass kids to my house <laughs> and they broke my rules <laughs> and now I'm the, now now I'm disciplining them for breaking my rules. So not only did you send your badass kid to my house. Now you got all her cousins and siblings talking shit about my country, about how yeah. bad we are and you want leniency? Yeah, they're saying, hey, man, cut her a break, all right? So she brought some drugs to your house. Relax. So you talk shit about me. You slander me through the media all <laughs> since 2016. And now... Yeah, you sanctioned you me. You sanctioned my wife. You sanctioned my daughter. You sanctioned my grandmother. She's dead. You take my yacht. And, and you want me And you want me to be lenient? Oh, you kiss my ass. You, I'm, I, they are going. I'm gonna put you like this. Uh, samples I, taken from Griner did not show any traces of drugs. Boykov added, "She was clean and she was tested." The lawyer said, "That's a lie. It's all it wrong. was. It was her decision to plead guilty." Griner's yeah. Russian legal team said in a statement, adding that she sets an example of being. She quote sets an example of being brave. End quote. Read the line. She says she was, quote, being brave. Is that what that says? Let's go, Brandon. Uh, she decided to take full responsibility for her actions as she knows that she is a role model for many people, end quote. Their statement read. So let me, let me, let me get this straight. Her so lawyers said they expect the trial to end around the beginning of August. I, I want to make sure I got, I want to make sure I got. Let's this. clarify, baby. Let's get it right. I want to make sure I got this correct. You knowingly, intentionally brought drugs to another country. Uh, not her story. Got caught. Yes. Said, oh, my bad. I didn't know this was in my suitcase. I'm sorry. Played guilty. 
to say I'm a role model, I want to make sure I do the right thing. <laughs> and then turn around and want leniency? Uh, it's a whirlwind, man. Getting caught really takes you up it, and down, it doesn't, doesn't it? it? Bro, it doesn't, it doesn't make... It don't make sense to me. So you knowingly brought drugs to another country, whether yep. you say you did or not. You knew you were being naughty. You knew it. You got yep. caught because you didn't you think caught. you were going to get caught. You got caught. Your hand was in the cookie jar. Your mom came in and you turned around and you just tried to hide your hand. And she knew the whole time. And then there was nothing you could do. You were busted. So then you go on this whole rant about how I'm innocent and they're holding me and blase, blase. No, you're a moron. You get what you deserve. I hope they smack both your hands and your ass. Because I'm going to put it to you like this. Russia is going to make sure that, that no more Americans do this stupid shit. They're <laughs> going to crucify her ass. <laughs> if Joe Biden don't give them what they want, they are going to crucify her. And them 10 years, she's going to see every single bit of those 10 years. I can guarantee it. I think she's going to do two years, like you said. She's going to come back, but she's going to be the fucking Manchurian candidate. And she's got to be totally brainwashed. We're going to think it's all good. Like, she's going to play basketball again. It's going to be normal. And then, like, Biden's going to be up there, and he's going to say, Brittany... Uh, you're an American hero, an American hero is going to be the trigger phrase for her to like lash out and just shove him off the stage and kill him right then and there. Dude, it's something, bro. It just it. She'd be like, it, this is for Putin. It, it's for me, dude. It's it's for me. It's the the fact that, that that no one's holding her accountable for her actions. Like you're 31 years old. I think Fox News probably is. I haven't, I haven't seen it, but I'd imagine they're making plenty of jokes. Care. See, no, I don't want Fox News. Fox News, obviously Fox News, they got conversations. I want her constituents. Yes. I want her fans. I want her support. I want her to team be to be like, hey, you're an idiot. <laughs> All right? You screwed us. The grinders. You put yourself you in a bad situation, and you did this to yourself. I want to hear that. But they just, oh, black woman is black woman. And listen, she ain't a black woman. She want to be a black man, all right? Let, let, let's, let, let's keep that. Let, let's be honest with this. Let, let's be real. She don't want to be a woman. She's a man. That's what she wants. That's why she looks like that, okay? That's what, she, that's what she's going for. She wore a tuxedo at her wedding, okay? <laughs> all right? Let's get that. She, she's a black man now at this point. Let's play. She'll be treated as such. I haven't seen any of this video. Let's see what a little bit of this says here. This is Russian justice conducted behind closed doors. Just a glimpse of Brittany Griner towering above her guards, <laughs> being led handcuffed. Towering. The 31-year-old was detained at a Moscow airport in February when Russian customs officials oh, are say they, they found when they come small up quantities on her? of cannabis oil in her luggage, an illegal cannabis substance oil. under Russian law. Recordings made inside the uh -oh. court capture the female basketball star through a translator pleading guilty Kershaw, to the Crenshaw. serious drug smuggling charges against her. Do you hear do you hear how deep that voice is? I would that like is, to plead guilty on the charges. That is a man. Brittany, you don't have to disguise your voice for this. Is it. <laughs> I'm not disguising my voice. <laughs> that is a man. Listen, I am Brittany Griner. Listen, listen. So she's getting drug trafficking charges. You know how serious that shit is? International drug trafficking charges. Which is, I mean, how much CBD oil, I mean, Jesus Christ, do you got to have on you for that? I think in Russia, it don't matter. I really don't think. I think. I don't think. I think in Russian, it does. You know, I YouTube Russian law right before this episode, and I, that checks out. <laughs> Dude, they are going to crucify this lady or this man or whatever the hell she want to be recognized as. They're going to crucify. She is a lady. They're going to crucify this individual. She is not getting out. And if they do, it's going to be because Joe Biden decided to give Russian Russia what they want. 
Let me read that. The decision to plead guilty was made by Gordon alone. The source close to her said, but in recent, nah, that, no, 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 no. I'm not pleading guilty if I'm innocent. I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit where I'm at. If I'm innocent, I'm not pleading guilty. Given the all. 99% reported conviction rate in Russian criminal cases, Dreyer was urged to weigh all factors. 99%? That means ain't nobody getting out of this. Dude. Yeah, she gonna sit. She, she gonna sit. They gonna use her, but if they don't get what they want, it's a done deal. It, it's a done deal. Uh, it says, still before any potential prisoner swap, it was expected Griner would have to be convicted and also admit fault. A senior U.S. official told CNN, Reed, uh, referring to Trevor Reed, had to sign a document saying he was guilty, something he had resisted for almost the entirety of his detention just days before he was Reed? let out, the official said. What's up? Who the hell is Trevor Reed? He is some. I think he was a... Uh, I could be sounding like an idiot here, but I'm pretty sure he was enlisted like a military man over there that got caught, maybe a POW in some sort of way. But, but he didn't have, he wasn't, it wasn't a drug charge. No, I don't think so. I think he was some sort of military type thing. So this is a different situation than his. She's on trafficking. She's on drug trafficking. It's not just whatever <laughs> Trevor Reed is. It's drug trafficking. That is a big deal. <laughs> International drug trafficking? Oh, you're in trouble. I they mean, don't. again, who knows how much she had on her? Like, I, I think at this point, Russians don't care how much she had on her. Oh, the they definitely don't care, it. yeah. The fact that, that she had it is enough. Dude. Um, let's see. You wanted to also get into, and I love I love that we're getting into something a little fun here, uh, Arch Manning. Fuck him. Okay. That's how I feel about that. Where's he going to school? Texas. Bastard. The number one, isn't he the number one overall prospect in the country? Yeah. And you know what's crazy? There are better kids than he is. That's the funny thing. There are better kids than him. Like, there are, there are a lot of better prospects than him. This from... SportsIllustrated.com, Arch Manning put on a show this summer during Isadora Newman's seven-on-seven drills. From Michael Gresser, the Texas Longhorns found their next-generation quarterback when they received a commitment from Arch Manning. Manning is the number one overall player in the class of 2023. Critics of Manning often claim, sounds like Nate, he is overrated due to his last name. However, he uh, continues to prove he is worthy of such a high rating when he steps onto the gridiron. Manning has been busy this summer developing his game during seven-on-seven drills at Isidore Newman High School. It is clear to see why Manning is as highly rated as he is from clips of these drills. Here is a highlight reel of Manning and his receiver, Anthony Jones. Let's see what we got here. Arch Manning to Anthony Jones. Pretty grainy. And, uh, well, I don't know. He just hit him straight down the middle. Anybody, I think anybody could throw that. That's an easy route to throw. Let's see it again. I mean, I mean, I'm not seeing any difficult throws. I mean, are, are, are they accurate? Cause I, mean, yeah, I, can, throw, I mean, I can throw I can throw a fly route. That's easy. I can throw that. With, that's uncovered. I can throw that. I can so throw a cross route, too. This is him apparently lighting it up. Oh, I can throw a crossing route. You just he just got it before the coverage. The coverage is bad. With no pass rush. Yeah, exactly. So we, we you know what? We're gonna see. We, we're gonna see. You know, we I, I honestly I feel what? like also you're looking for the things like mechanics, anticipation, footwork. So you know, are those things there? Seems like it. I mean that was an easy throw for sure. Yeah, I mean it's you gotta look at the, you gotta look at the situation though. You know, it's seven on seven. You don't have to read a defense. You 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 your run your run your receivers they just pick routes to run. We but here? they were better court they were quarterbacks with better stats than he had. Beautiful spiral, beautiful spiral. Again, I want I want to see what it looks like. When he steps on that field, I want to see his first year. If he lights it up his first year, because they they 
I mean, they deal with pretty decent, you know, not too bad of defenses. So we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll see how he does. I think he's going to be fantastic. Uh, his first. Oh, he's going to start his first year. His freshman right. year, he's starting. I think, you know, he's going to do a lot of things where the guys go, oh, you can tell this is Peyton's kid. I mean, he just reads the defense. He's saying Omaha. He's doing this. He's doing that. And I do think he's going to be very good at anticipation and uh, blitz pickups because that's what his dad does. I'm sure he's lived and breathed football his entire life. My question is, does burnout set in? You know what I mean? Yeah. Does he get to a point where it's too much football and he's tired of it and it starts to affect him mentally and he just checks out of the game? So that would be interesting to interesting to it's follow. Gonna, it's going gonna, gonna to be an interesting, gonna be an interesting situation. It's going to be a very interesting situation. Uh, last but certainly not least, before we jump into this, uh, these divisional breakdowns, I should say, there is a hot, super hot story out there that we just had to bring up. Zach Wilson is a, he's a pimp. <laughs> this guy from the sun.com, New York Jets quarterback says in the sack, New York Jets quarterback Zach Wilson, 22, had a fair. With his mom's best friend, hey, Star claimed. I'm not mad. I'm not mad at him. No, I do you? Mean, this kid, first of all, got a baby face. He's handsome as hell, taking advantage of the Bieber effect. Right. Uh, you know, do you want to talk about faithfulness and being a cheater? Of, of course. You know, if he's cheating on his girl, that's never good. No. He's a no. young man. He, he's, he's made mistakes. He'll make more mistakes. But goddamn, if there isn't one category that I spend a lot of my time on when I'm online, <laughs> it involves older women a lot of the time, man. This guy, he just gets after it. I mean, hey, you got to do what you got to do. And his teammates uh, are loving it. <laughs> from Chris Bradford, from The Sun, Abby Guile reportedly made the shocking claim after her new boyfriend, and Washington Commanders star Dax Milne shared a snap of the loved up pair on his Instagram. Uh, the post was captioned, word on the street. One social media user allegedly labeled Guile a homie hopper, prompting <laughs> him to hit back. Oh, you're familiar with this term. <laughs> All right, Nate, why don't you, I'm a little too... You know, white for this. I don't understand what's going on here. If you would please enlighten me, what is a homie hopper? That's a very, 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 very unfortunate name for a female to to, to pick up. Okay, it's a very unfortunate name. And 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 if she has that name, if that's a nickname for her, then you need to stay away from her. Because basically, what that means is she fucks the homies. That's what that means. Is it is it better? Worse than or equal to a thought? Probably worse, because at least at least you know, you know, uh, it might be equal. I think they might be equal because there's a potential that if she's a thought, she probably did. She probably smashed the homies. So, it, 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 you never know. But that that's an unfortunate name for that young lady to to, to have. So, uh, well, she hey. wasn't having it. She fired back. She then reportedly claimed, quote, he, Wilson, was sleeping with his mom's best friend. That's the real homie hopper. No, it's not. That's not even. Why would you? What, what in her her brain? Her, okay. The her, term, uh, apparently, according to the son, homie hopper is a reference to someone who quickly dates their ex's best friend following a breakup. That's 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 I don't know who I don't know who whitewashed that, but that's not exactly what that means. But have you ever known a homie hopper? Oh, plenty. Yeah, plenty. <laughs> that's 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 a cardinal rule. That's that's one thing you don't do. It's, it's cardinal rule. And, and 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 I've seen that break up many of friendships, is you do not absolutely one hundred percent you do not date your best friend or your brother uh, ex ever. That's a that's a big no. They are off limits. You do that. What about, what about siblings? No, no, at all. No, never. I mean, you can date siblings. You can date you. If I had a sister and you wanted, that's cool. But you don't. No, <laughs> no, no. 
you don't you do not you you do not like, you can't be best friends with somebody and him and his girlfriend break up and you just you can't do that no that's 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 vile that's that's a violation you you there's a big probability you might get your ass beat up for it so okay no, no, it's a no-go i would like to clarify for the third member of this show tj not a homie hopper <laughs> just so everyone knows oh man. that is um, that's an unfortunate name that they gave her but but the fact that she thought that hmm i know how i'm gonna get him he cheated on me with his mom's best friend lady you understand how much clout you just gave this young man uh, right right i mean he cheated on you he's 22 with a much older woman and i'm pretty sure she's hot so that's a, you just gave him a shit ton of credibility. You just you basically you. I don't know if you've seen the tweets from his teammates, but <laughs> they're all loving this. Dude, honestly, it, it might have taken him from unlikable to likable. Fact, exactly. Like his yeah. teammates, the respect he's gonna get for this. Like she don't under, she doesn't understand what she did for this dude at all. He had that California mama's boy, like mm-hmm. never even had his hand in the dirt look to him. And now he's like, he's like, uh, he's, he's basically Ron Jeremy of the NFL. Hey, you you slept with your mom's best friend? What? <laughs> You're 22 years old and you slept with your mom's best friend? Mm. And it's not like just any friend, it's the best friend. So that says a lot. Props so, to you, Zach Wilson. <laughs> big time. And his right. team, he's gonna get he's gonna have a lot of respect going into the season this year. If we are gonna get out of here at any decent hour, we gotta start getting through these uh divisional breakdowns. So let's bring up first team that we are gonna discuss in the NFC West, the Seattle Seahawks. Same coach, uh, but many different faces on this team, Nate. This team underwent some serious changes surgery a, a overhaul if you will new quarterback new middle linebacker it, it's gonna look weird not seeing russell wilson with the seattle seahawks anymore not seeing bobby wagner yeah. two staples of this seattle seahawks team for the past decade or so you're stuck um, you're stuck with fucking drew lock and uh what's the other kid's name uh geno smith <laughs> Actually, you know what? Before we get into this, we didn't bring it up. It's been a while. We missed out on the uh, Baker Mayfield news. So for the MFers who do think we're out of touch, we we did catch that. Baker Mayfield has been traded to the Carolina Panthers. Uh, What does that do for you? Specifically, I wanted to know if – obviously, I think we both still have Tampa Bay as the number one team in the South for the NFC. But does that put the Panthers solidly at number two, or is it still kind of a battle? No. No. Okay. Here's here's the thing. They traded Baker away from peanuts. Okay. He was their first round. He was the first. Was he the first pick of his draft? He was high. I believe Heisman Trophy winner, first overall pick. The first overall pick, and he got traded away for a conditional fifth round, 2024 fifth round pick. That's what he got traded away for. The money has fallen, as they say. They don't. They didn't trust Baker in Cleveland. That's why they traded him. I mean, we saw it last year in the AFC. It was not not the, it was the year before in the AFC Championship against the Chiefs. We saw it. They, you know, late in the game, they were up. Or they were up going into the fourth quarter, and you know, Patrick Mahomes did his thing, and they were relying on Baker to do the same thing, and he fell short big time. Hell, he even threw an interception. To end the game, so um, <laughs> this doesn't change anything for Carolina, just because Baker is Baker's a better quarterback than uh, Sam Darnold. We okay, can all, we can all agree to that. Baker's a better quarterback than Sam Darnold. Mm-hmm. No matter what uh, Robbie Anderson has to say, Sam Darnold is not a great quarterback. Um, what Robbie say about him? Robbie was like, so when they asked. Like early, like we, like right when the offseason started and the trade started, the rumors started coming out about Baker going to Carolina. Robbie was like, "No," when they asked him. So now it's like he, like he was doing an interview, 
And he was like, well, I want to explain. He's like, I don't have nothing against Baker. It's just that me and Sam Donald, we have that chemistry already. And it's wow. right. So they were both in New York together. So they have chemistry. But the thing is, Sam Donald had the starting job last year. The job with the team was his. It was his. But he floundered. He, yeah, he's, they, he's, after he was, after they, they went what three and oh after they started three and oh they just Sam Donald he became Sam Donald. It was and, terrible. Yeah, and then that's the thing. He became Sam Donald. So you know, Cam got involved and all this extra stuff got involved, and then now it's to a point where it's now like so they draft Matt Corral and now you trade for Baker. So now it's just like where does Sam Donald fall in? It's so they, yeah. They're going to say, well, it's going to be healthy. Company. No, it's not. We all know Baker's going to start. We know this. You're not, you're not, you didn't trade for Baker to sit Baker behind Sam Donald. No, we know this. Baker's going to be a starting QB in Carolina next year. And if he's not, that means Carolina don't care about their team or their fans. I, I think a lot gets made about this guy being named the starter, that guy being named the starter. What's that say for this guy's mental, this or that? You know, I, you know, as an Eagles fan, I've seen the controversy, whether it's been McNabb or Carson Wentz or Jalen Hurts. Oh, if you if you don't have if you don't name the starter, then what's he gonna? I, in a way, all that stuff is nonsense. But in this situation, I think it's it's not going to work because you have two guys right now in Sam Darnold and Baker Mayfield who are working on trying to really get a clean slate with this new team that they have, you know, I mean, obviously Sam has been there one year, but you have two guys trying to make a new name for themselves. And yes, they've competed at the highest level. Yes. They've had pressure on them. I, I totally get that. But now any mistake, they are going to be worried and maybe I'm wrong. I believe they are going to be more worried about making a mistake and losing their job than the team succeeding. And that's maybe I'm wrong about that, but I just think at this point in their career, because they were so highly touted, I mean, Sam Darnold, I would think he was the number one pick for the Jets or close to it, you know, uh, super young when he started for USC, super young coming out of high school, uh, very early success. Baker Mayfield, like we said, I mean, walk on Texas Tech and then gets to Oklahoma, number one overall pick, like all the shit that comes with that. So I just think, unfortunately, for the Panthers and these guys, it's going to be a weird situation where they're going to have a competition and they're going to be more concerned about making a mistake and both of them are going to suck rather than either one of them succeeding. Yeah, I mean, because you got to be honest. To be honest, I mean, if because Chris, Christian McCaffrey is that offense. Yeah, and should if be. Christian, yeah, and when if, he's on the field, yeah. And if Christian McCaffrey can't stay healthy – they neither none of these quarterbacks are going to succeed. Right. None of, them. none of them. Not Darnold. Not Baker. Not correct. None of them. None of them are going to be successful if Christian McCaffrey can't stay healthy. Because well, they. Would, I mean, you would hope that making this trade, you would hope you're getting a guy that can overcome that. But I do understand what you're saying. No. You, look what look what Baker had in Cleveland. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So there's just there's there's nothing. There's nothing that you – I mean, Christian McCaffrey has to be healthy. He has to yeah. stay healthy. Yeah. And and I don't think he's going to because he's he's such a big part of that offense as far as rushing and receiving. He just takes too many hits. So – and then their receivers aren't that great. I mean, you got Robbie Anderson, who's average. DJ Moore is above average. He's subpar. I can't, I can't even say he's above average. He's like a subpar receiver. Like, I think be- DJ Moore. I think he's really good. I just think he needs he needs a Kirk Cousins. He needs a timing quarterback. Well, he definitely don't have neither. So that's for sure. And yeah. the thing is, you just DJ Moore is just like I said. He's not he's not that guy who's gonna make who's gonna give you nightmares. He's not that guy. If you're a defensive coordinator the night before, you're not going into the game like, oh my god, we got DJ Moore next week. I mean, no one's concerned about DJ Moore. So. I would liken him to Devontae Smith. Like, he's a very good route runner. They'll give you a little razzle-dazzle, but, yeah, he's not going to, like, break a bunch of tackles or, no. like, Tyreek Smith or Tyreek Hill you to death, you know, things no, like that. No, he's not. Yeah, he's yeah, he's not. We can play him in single coverage. 
we 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 can play one on one with him. We're not concerned about it. So, but um, I mean, the weapons are there. Like the defense is young and talented. The weapons are there. So if they can get competent quarterback play, they can compete for number two certainly in the division. That's a big ass. I, I'm gonna be honest. I don't know. I've been. Here. A big if. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you that. But I mean, you're going up against Marcus Mariota and Jameis Winston. So, but I, I've been hearing a lot of great things about my team. I'm not saying it's I'm not saying it's you know it's something that I'm getting excited, but I mean I'm hearing like I'm hearing a lot of things as far as uh I can't think of this kid's name. The quarterback that we just drafted, I can't think of his name. Oh uh yeah, Ritter. Yeah. Him, he I hear I hear a lot of great things about him. Our receivers, uh, you know, it's the defense is the one thing I'm concerned. We just signed uh what's his name? Damn. We just – he was – this is – I can't think of his damn name. Anyway, I think our defense is going to be decent. A real, but that's a real not, difference maker. Yeah, I that's can't not – I can right now. Yeah, that's not who we're talking about tonight, but um, I'm, I'm going to figure out his name. Um, As far as the, the Seahawks go, um, I did see something that they were doing a lot of their film work on Jimmy G. Uh, so – it's a very possibility they may make a trade. They may, you know, make a go at him. But I think San Francisco is going to want too much, and I don't think they have enough to give to get him. So uh, they're going to be stuck with Geno Smith and uh, fucking Drew Locke. So good luck to them. Any, I'm going to just tell you like this. If you, if you had any Seahawks receivers last year, do not draft them in your fantasy this year. Yeah, this don't do that. Don't do that. It's not going to be a good year for you. Hey, I'm going to grab another beer while I'm doing that. You tell me how your fantasy went. You tell the MFers how your fantasy went last year. Oh, shit. How did my fantasy go last year? Uh, damn, I forgot how. Oh, I actually won. I, I remember. I actually won it last year. That was the best thing about that one. I had a couple, I had a couple scares towards the end of the year, but. I actually was able to pull through in the championship game. So that, that was the, the best part of the whole situation. Uh, who did I have last year? I, I had a I had a string of things that I had to play through, especially with Rob get with Rob Cross getting hurt. I had Aaron Rodgers. Uh I had, I had a pretty decent team. It was enough to win the championship, put it like that. It was enough to win the championship. But uh I don't know. This year, this year's gonna be this year's gonna be different. But I'm gonna tell you like this: the the, the who who saved me? Debo Samuel saved my season last year. Just, I just oh got yeah, it. for sure. Debo Samuel saved my season last year. I always have that one player that saves my season. The first year, my I think I had one year. Patrick Mahomes saved my season. It was the first year like he started. It was what game? He was still a free agent after I think he had. Uh, let's see, I think it was one game where he threw for like. It was his first game he threw for like 400 yards and four touchdowns. I was like, I gotta get this kid. <laughs> Luckily, I was my I'm, I was so low at the rate in the rankings, I was able to pick him up without having to deal with any of that. Uh. So and that year he that was the year he saved my season. It, it's always somebody. I always have I think one year I had Evan Rogers. So it's it, it it goes up and down. I always find that like that dark horse that I don't think about, and then they end up just coming on oh no Jonathan Taylor and Debo Samuel was my help last year like I was I almost I'm gonna be honest I almost traded him away after the after the second game in the season I was like this dude is wasting my time <laughs> I'm about to trade him or <laughs> cut him and then he just fuck just took off I was like yeah I'm happy I didn't give him up yeah, somebody tried God. to trade me somebody tried to give me a shit trade for him and I'm like you serious are you seeing what this kid is doing right now? I'm not giving him up for whatever. You're going to give me a roster for him. I mean, the way injuries occur, sometimes it just takes that one guy to catch fire to just totally take your team to the next level. Absolutely. 100%. As far oh, as Seattle. Eddie goes, Goldman is his name. Who's that? Eddie Goldman. From oh, really? Chicago. No. Yeah, we signed him no. for a one-year deal. So that's going to be, that's going to be great. He, he's going to bring a lot of what we need to that defensive line. I think Dean Pease is the defensive coordinator. Yeah, Dean, P Dean Pease is the defensive coordinator, but we got Ryan Pace, who's the former GM for Chicago. 
So he's been signing a lot of his old players. See, the guy between the two of them, they clearly know defensive talent. Like I did enjoy the drafts. I mean, obviously bringing in Goldman's huge. Uh, it's just going to be interesting what they do offensively because Ryan Pace, I mean, boy, what a nightmare uh, in Chicago. <laughs> um, but as far as the Seahawks go, uh, last year, 7-10, and 10, kind of middle of the road on both sides of the football, 16 uh, offensively as far as points scored, 11th on defense. Russell Wilson had that stretch of games after he, like, broke his finger on Aaron Donald's helmet, which – really threw everything off. They had to go with a backup for, I think, one game, and then Russ – or I think a few a games, month. actually. It was a month. Yeah, he missed the entire month, and they and they fell hard. And I they went seven – I'm I'm going to be honest. They might have the number one pick next year. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be completely honest with you. <laughs> if they don't get Jimmy Garoppolo, they are going to have the number one pick next year. Because there's no way you're gonna, there's no way you're gonna be able to get back to the middle of the pack, or even compete in this division for a playoff spot with Drew Locke and fucking Geno Smith. It's just not happening. Yeah, I mean, if they had some sort of stellar defense like they had in the Legion of Boom, I'd say they had a, a chance. But Absolutely. they just don't. They they're they totally do. devoid of talent uh, on both sides of the ball. Really, I mean, they still have their two stud receivers. But nobody trusts Geno Smith or Drew Locke to get them the ball consistently. You know, the offensive line is shoddy. No one has faith in it. Even if you like what Rashad Penny did at the end of the year, even if you like Kenneth Walker, who they got in the draft, it's still kind of like, okay, are they going to be able to block for them? Nah. it's it's yeah. and, and the thing is, you got to think about this. You also got to look at the, the, the threat. Russell Wilson is gone. He's gone. Russell Wilson was a threat. Like you had to, you had to play eleven men. Like it's just one that you had to be concerned about the quarterback. Oh yeah. We don't have to be concerned about the quarterback. We could fuck. We could rush four and still get him. We. I'm not concerned about Drew Lock lighting me up from in the pocket. No, I'm not concerned about that. Or Geno Smith. Clearly, Geno Smith had his opportunities in multiple teams, and he just couldn't do it. So I don't see. Unless, like I said, unless they get a competent quarterback like Gene, like a. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo, they at best looking at this schedule. They I mean, have an easy a, schedule. They have an easy not schedule. a whole lot of gimmies. What I love about the schedule, there's a lot. I would say there's a lot of gimmies, but the thing is, no. you don't have it. You don't. You don't have the talent to say it's gimmies. All right. So right, right. if you had Russell Wilson still, I'm gonna give you the Broncos game. If you still had Russell Wilson, I'll give you the. Well, hold on. Hold on. Let's point out how amazing that is. Week one, they take on Russell Wilson, Monday Night Football. Right. At home in Seattle. Right. That's right. fantastic. That is <laughs> – no. someone has to be like, you know what? We got to draw this up perfectly. That's we, amazing. We got to draw this up perfectly. So I'm, th- I'm, looking at, I'm looking at it like this. So if you had Russell Wilson, I would give you the first – six games as potential gimmies. I would give you the first six, but you don't have Russell Wilson. So, and, and the defense is shoddy at best. We don't know how, how, how well they're going to play. So you're looking at Russell Wilson, who actually has receivers. In the, not He had receivers, but he has more talent offensively than he did in Seattle. The line's probably better, yeah. Oh, it's way better. Yeah. So, you know, he has – so he he's gonna light them up. He and then they're going and from what I'm hearing that they're gonna let him do him. They're gonna let Russell Wilson be Russell Wilson. <laughs> so he's probably gonna light them up. He, he he's probably gonna light them up. Um Jimmy, we don't know what the quarterback situation is in San Francisco yet. So I, I'm gonna be generous and I'll give them I, I'll give them that San Francisco game. On the road, really? Okay. I'll, I'll give them the San Francisco game. I'm going to okay. give it to them because you don't know if you're going to get Trey Lance or you're going to get Jimmy Garoppolo. Um, I'm going to be I'm honest not, with the MFers right now. Huh? I'm going to be honest with the MFers right now, and I'm glad it worked out this way. We will save the AFC West for last next week, baby. Hopefully, TJ will be on. We're saving that division for next week because I'm glad it worked out this way. I did want to save that for last. I'm not giving – I can't – 
I, I, I'm gonna say they, I, I mean, you can have the twelves all day. I'm not giving you. I'm not. I can't give you the Falcons game. I can't give it to you because you you look at the talent as far as receiver goes. Like we have talent. Um, our defense is getting healthy. We got Isaiah Oliver back, and he's he's looking healthy. Obviously, we got AJ Terrell, who's the best corner that no one talked about last year. Um, so I can't give you that. I can give you Detroit. I, I can so you're you. saying on my birthday, your Dirty Birds are going to Seattle to get a win against the Seahawks and the 12th man? Yes. Okay. And yes. then what about on the road to Detroit? Detroit's a toss-up, dude. It's really a toss-up. Oh, uh, yeah, because you're getting Goff. a you're getting an easy team, but it's in their house. Yeah, it, it is. It is. Jerry and you're Goff, a city team yourself. But they're not going to have their their rookie wide out. Their rookie, you know, what's his name? The kid from Alabama. Jameson? Yeah, they're not going to have him. Yeah. So not yet. But they got weapons. I mean, they got. I mean, it's it's going to be up to Jared Goff. So let's say that's going to be a loss. So we're they're sitting at what? One there, what one in three now? So more than one likely, three, yeah. One in three that's through the first four games. They got the Saints at the Saints. Yeah, that's even though Jameis is as bad as he is. Yeah, they're not beating. They're, so they're of these, beating. of these first five games, mm-hmm. you're saying the only team that they beat is the hardest one, the first one, the Broncos. No, no, I said, oh no, they're not beating the them. Niners. I said the Niners. Yeah. Okay, okay. I give them the Niners because again, they're sitting in quarterback hell right now. Right. Okay. Like, yeah. Are we going to keep Jimmy G? Are we going to trade Jimmy G? You know what, what's happening here? But again, like I said, if, if they get Jimmy Garoppolo, then it's going to be it's going to change a little bit of their situation. Yeah. Or, early season, early season Trey Lance could be bad. So I give you that's a good point. Because why do you have to think about it? For if you get a if you get a guy like Jimmy Garoppolo. He's going to have no offense. Uh, well, he'll have George Kittle. Well, no, I'm talking about if they trade for him. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So in Seattle, he'll have DK Metcalf. He'll have uh, no offense. He'll have – what's the I, – why I can't I keep going? Blame. Lockett. Yeah, he'll have Tyler Lockett, and he'll yeah. have a few others. So he'll have weapons to throw to. Yeah, and he'll they have, have big weapons, threats. yeah. Yep. So, I mean, you think about it. The only threat on in San Francisco is George Kittle and Debo Samuel. I mean, right. Brandon Ayuk, he shows up every so often. So, right. um, you look at that, you got DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett, and then you got, and then you add a good tight end and no offense. So, if you get a guy like Jimmy Garoppolo, and if I think they resign Rashad Penny, I think you'll be fine. But at this moment with Drew Lock, because Drew Lock has basically the same. I mean, he had talented wideouts in Denver. Let's be honest; he just yeah. couldn't use it. I mean, he, he had a not, good run game. I mean, the he's defense is not very good. Let's let's put it that way. Yeah, the defense wasn't that great, but I mean, a competent quarterback could have used that defense. So I'm I'm looking at this schedule, and at best, I could probably give them four, maybe five wins. I don't yeah, see I them, don't I don't see them sweeping I don't see them sweeping anybody in their division. <laughs> Give me your gummies. I hate to encourage that, but that was pretty funny. But yeah, no, I, I don't. I mean, I can't see them sweeping the Niners twice. I can't. They're not beating the, the the Rams at all. Like that's that's not happening. They're not beating the Rams at no. all. So I can't. That's not gonna be. Who else is in that damn division? Arizona. Yep. I mean, they had. Well, no. Well. No, nah, because he could, he's going to be suspended for that game. DeAndre Hopkins, think- he, he he's suspended for week six. So he's suspended for six weeks. So he uh, so he is going to uh, – so they might have a chance. What about what about a home game versus the Giants, though? A home game versus the I, that, that That'll be one of those wins I can give okay. them. That's one okay. of the wins I can give them. Because, I mean, they take on a lot of good quarterbacks in the schedule, but like you said, I mean, the Niners will have a, a question mark early in the season. Then you have Detroit early on, the the Saints right after that with Jameis, who knows. 
There's right. a chance for a couple wins, but like you said, I, I don't see this team winning more than five games. Yeah, no. Because, I mean, you look at – their so if you look at the beginning of their schedule, it's probably the easiest – the first nine games is the easiest stretch they'll probably – oh, crap, they'll ever have. Nice. Yeah. And then, and then going into the second half of the season, starting with, with the Raiders, going – yeah, they it's just – it's not – and it's it's not it's it doesn't look good for them. And like I said, that's if they if they don't if they got to run with Geno Smith and Drew Lock, then it's gonna be a long season for Seattle. It's going to be very very strange seeing this team without Russell Wilson Absolutely. and Bobby Wagner. I mean, I know like middle linebackers come and go, and we love Ray Lewis. Then all of a sudden, you know, you adjust this seeing him out there. But I mean, Bobby Wagner is a is a big deal. So him not being there. Yeah, he he it's gonna be that defense is gonna look. I hope those rookies that they signed and drafted step in because if not, it's gonna be a long season for Seattle. Oh yeah, for sure. What the hell is this? Is this it? Yeah. No, it's Cardinals. I've been waiting for this one. <laughs> ah, let's see what I got anyway. All right, Arizona. This is one hard ass schedule. You want to talk about tough schedule? This is a tough schedule. The Cardinals come in after an 11 and 6 season last year. Uh, They brought in DeAndre Hopkins, had a hot thing going. Now DeAndre's facing potentially a six game suspension. Potentially. He's suspended for six games. Ain't no potential, nothing. He's done for six weeks. I thought there's a chance it could still be reduced. Yeah, they're not reducing that. (laughs) <laughs> you're gonna sit these six weeks but uh <laughs> so hopkins likely suspended six games we'll see uh they they trade for hollywood brown kyler murray's old teammate at oklahoma um they lose chase edmonds at running back but they still have james connor who finished the season strong mm-hmm. uh zach Ertz obviously figures to benefit from hopkins um, absence for you fantasy players out there, but that's a big deal, you know, as far as actual football relevance. Not having DeAndre out there is going to be a big deal. We'll see what, what AJ Green they have. they have Rondell oh, Moore. I forgot they got AJ Green. Yeah. Yeah. No, his, that's a key kick returner. Rondell Moore, he's a kick returner. And that's that's <laughs> all he'll ever be because he had an opportunity last year and he fumbled it. And he he going to be kick returner. So, I mean, he may get an opportunity with DeAndre Hopkins gone, but. At the best, he he is going to be AJ Green and Hollywood Brown, and the reason why, ball, and this is the thing that no one really wants to talk about. Like, let's think about it. Hollywood Brown was a a first round draft pick, okay, and, and they gave him away for pretty much close to nothing, okay. And anyway, yeah, he he had an issue with the offense, and he also had an issue with running routes. He's not a great route. Okay, let's let's just be he's not he doesn't get separation that's necessary for you know the quarterback to make throws so i think that was one of the reasons why one of the big reasons why they got rid of him i don't but, think he's i don't think he's an excellent route runner but he is so fast he like he can like make up for all of the speed he, he's a, he's a, he's a john ross but he can run he can yeah. run routes on an average level He's John Ross, but more a little bit more durable. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So it's it's gonna it's gonna be interesting, but I I can tell you this. I mean, your first game of the season is against the Chiefs. Okay? Right. And, and you know they got a you know they're gonna have a, a a big ass chip on their shoulder, especially after they how they ended the season last year. Um, you got a new you got a new look with uh, with the Raiders uh, with Devontae Adams. You got the oh Jesus! So you go Chiefs, Raiders, Rams, Panthers. I'm gonna give them that win. Cardinals got, got a tough stretch here to open the season. You got the Eagles, Seahawks, Saints, and then every other. So it's verse at verse at verse at. Who's under the Saints? Who's in Week Eight and Nine? Um, we got the Vikings and oh Seahawks. Oh my God! Jesus Christ! Who did this? I mean, yeah, we just talked about how Seattle was going to suck, but the Vikings is going to be tough in Minnesota. On Halloween. 
Who made this schedule? That is rude. Bro, somebody hates them. Dude, it's t- there's no – and the crazy thing is there's nowhere they can make a run. There's nowhere in sight you can make a run. You got Chiefs, Raiders, Rams, Panthers, Eagles, Seahawks, Saints, Vikings, Seahawks again. And then you got to – you start – with the Rams, then you got to go to. Then you got to go. To, is that? Then you go to Mexico City to play San Francisco. The Chargers. You have got to hope your season is still intact by the time you hit this bye week. They could. They could go to the bye week uh, pretty wounded. <laughs> wounded ain't the word. <laughs> pretty wounded. Oh my god! Then I could got- potentially. I could potentially see a run if they beat the. Panthers in week four, uh, take on the Eagles at home week five, travel to Seattle week six, and then take on the Saints week seven. That's potentially a four-game run. Unlikely. I'm sure there's a loss in there somewhere. But if I was to say there's a run, that's probably where it is. So, and here's the thing that everyone's forgetting about the Saints. The Saints lost probably one of the better offensive-minded head coaches in the game. Yep. They're stuck with whoever it is. They're, they're stuck with their defensive coordinator, who I'm pretty sure was a head coach some years ago. He was. And he just been bouncing from team to team ever since. It was. It was bad. He was horrible. <laughs> Let's be honest. So, um, it's you know you don't we don't no one knows what we're gonna get with the Saints. We don't right. know if they're gonna be that same offensive juggernaut. Obviously, you get Michael Thomas back. You sign Chris Olave. You have. Uh, oh. You bring, you still got Elvin Kamara. Can I tell you something? Huh? Can I tell you something right here now? And this is my secret that only the people who watched one hour, 11 minutes, or 12 minutes into the show are ever going to know. What? Chris Olave. I am going to try to get him wherever I can in fantasy football drafts this season. (laughs) Any chance I get to get Chris Olave this season, I'm taking it. And he's not a secret. A lot of people feel this way. I get it. But I'm on the train. And any chance I get to get him, I'm getting him. (laughs) Michael Thomas might not be ready. They traded up spots in the draft to get this kid. And Mm -hmm. Jameis Winston throws the ball, whether the receiver is covered or not. So (laughs) if any chance I get to get Chris Olave, I'm getting him. That's going to be... Yeah, that that's gonna be that's gonna be something very interesting. Oh yeah. So uh, I'm I, I I'm gonna be. You said it was they had eleven. They went eleven and six last year. E- <sighs> Holy shit! Bro. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, oh, Cardinals. Yes. Uh, I'm gonna be honest. You know I'm what? Twenty two. Offensively be- and defensively, uh, as far as points scored, ranked eleventh in both. I, I'm 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 probably gonna have to give them half those wins this year. Really? I'm, I'm probably pro- look just based off looking at the schedule and looking at the, the team right now, you you're not gonna have your best wide out in DeAndre Hopkins. So right. as a defensive coordinator, we don't have to do too we can be physical with Hollywood Brown. And that's the problem. Like he was bad, like you can't play in the AFC North and not be physical. So all we're gonna do is put hands on him. We're gonna put hands on him at the line, and we're gonna we're we gonna throw him off. And then we got AJ Green, who's on a back half of his career. So uh, at this point, I, I'm 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 gonna say like the first six games is gonna be abysmal. It's gonna be a long. <laughs> that's gonna be the longest six weeks of the Cardinals' life. They're gonna be shootouts. It's gonna have to be, and and, and it's gonna have to be. It yeah. really is. Yeah, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say I'm gonna say six wins. Max. I know I can't name too many offensive linemen for the Cardinals. I'm pretty sure they have DJ Humphrey still. Outside of that, um, okay, so they did add Will Hernandez from the Giants, former second round pick. Hopefully that shores things up. So, uh, as far as what you're saying about being physical with Hollywood, I I totally agree. The thing that I'll a caveat to that is Kyler Murray can move around and he's very good about keeping his eyes downfield as he's moving around. He's very familiar with Hollywood Brown. So 
if he gets out of the pocket on these scramble situations, you know, those second chance plays like Russell Wilson to Tyler Lockett, I mean, this might be that, are going to be there. So if Rondell Moore becomes more than just a kick returner, if Andy Isabella, you know, kind of takes that step forward. I forgot, that they, he, I forgot they still had him. Yeah, I mean, that he hasn't really panned out. But if, if this is the year, then the Arizona Cardinals are going to have a very small but very quick wide receiver core. And if Kyler Murray can take advantage of that, if James Conner stays healthy because behind him, Arizona's a little thin at running back, but he finished the year strong. So, yeah, uh, yeah man, this is going to be a fun team to watch. They lost Chandler Jones, but they still have some fun pieces, especially a linebacker. Um, that defense yeah, is going to have to step up. So we'll yeah. see. I'm, I'm going to say, I'm going to say seven at, I'm going to say seven final answer. So, yeah. Uh, would you, I don't mind. Who cares? What? <laughs> this is a stupid fantasy question. Not important. Um, let's see. Who's this? Boy, you know, I had it lined up. It was all good. Looked great. Everything went to shit. Ah, here it is. 49er schedule. Boom. Next team on the agenda. The San Francisco 49ers. Finished last year 10-7, and even with the controversy at quarterback after, uh, Taking Trey Lance, number three overall. Jimmy Garoppolo played majority of the season. 10-7, and seven, they were 13th in offensive points scored, ninth defensively. Uh, this is the team that's for the past several years, even though Kyle Shanahan has been kind of known as an offensive guru, uh, defensively strong team. When you talk about the defensive line and Nick Bosa and Eric Armstrad, so it's going to have to be another one of those years where the defense – holds them up with pressure and whatnot and turnovers because, man, big question marks at quarterback. Are they going to trade Jimmy Garoppolo? Uh, Debo Samuel wanted to trade at one point, and those kind of – those talks have calmed down. But a team in turmoil. So, Nate, I mean, when you think of the 49ers, what's on your mind? I'm looking at this as an easy schedule. That's how I'm looking. I'm looking at this as a really easy schedule. Um, I'm seeing some wins here. I'm seeing a lot of wins. Even though week one is at Chicago. Yeah, Chicago. Justin Fields is – they don't have – They don't, he he is throwing to fucking grocery store bag boys. Okay? They don't <laughs> He's have, throwing to Clifford Franklin? They don't have nobody to throw the ball to at all. I mean, who's their running back? The running back is actually probably the strongest point, uh, David it? Montgomery. Yeah, no. Nah. Yeah, no, he 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 ain't gonna make it through half the season if he has to take the load of that. He's not Derrick Henry. He gonna he he ain't gonna make it through half the season. So Khalil, Khalil Herbert was good, and then they got and then they just traded Khalil Mack away. So you you got rid of your best <laughs> True. your best yeah. defender. So I'm looking yeah. at I'm I'm looking at it like this. Um, well, not only did they trade him away, they traded Allen Robinson. Yeah, and that exactly. He's yeah. he's gone. So you really don't have anybody to throw the ball to. So I'm looking at it like this. Um, I'm going to go with the hypothetical. They don't trade Jimmy G. They keep him. He starts week one. Um, really? They, okay. They they beat Chicago. They beat Seattle. Mm, that Broncos game is going to be a tough game because, you know, but that def- that 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 Niners defense is something vicious. Got a Sunday as long night as they stay healthy at Denver, so that's gonna be a good one. As long as they, as long as that defense can stay healthy, that's gonna be that's gonna be the source of their their victories this year. They got uh, Sunday obviously- night football followed by Monday night football uh, at home against the Rams. So you got a long week. So you got Sunday night and then you got a Monday night. So that's a long week, dude. That's uh, crazy. Week three. September 25th, my birthday. I'm going to be watching this game for sure. Week four, uh, another great game. Monday night football, my sister's birthday, and I'm going to have to tell her, sorry, sis, another birthday where I'm going to be watching football instead of celebrating your birthday. Right? Oh. Um, so then they got the Panthers. Travel oh, to Panthers. Carolina. Yep. 
Panthers are gonna, Panthers are gonna be a toss up. To I'm Atlanta. Not, like I said, I'm, I'm still I'm still not like I'm not completely sold on my team. So like when I see my team on a schedule, I'm not I'm not really sold on them yet. You know, with Marcus Mariota and uh, Desmond Ritter, Ritter or whatever's fucking it, Ritter. I'm not really sold on them yet. Real quick, I gotta know. Do you do you have a, a timeline on if when you think Ritter will start in 2022? It's just gonna it's gonna really depend on how Mariota plays. Okay, so you he's you think we're gonna ride out the wins? You don't really. He's accustomed to this offense. He's accustomed to Arthur Smith's offense, so he knows right. the offense. Yeah. So it's just gonna be like, can he be that number one draft pick again? Okay. Can he get back to the his you know his first years when he was in Tennessee? Can he get to that to where he's making those big plays and he's able to, you know, become. I'm not gonna say elite, but a pro bowler. Let's put it right. that way. Yeah. Um, so like I said, right now between them, our defense is shaping up, and I'm liking what I'm seeing as far as my defense goes. But again, you know, we you know, I go through this every year and then we get out the field and we forget how to play fucking football. So um I'm looking at this, I can see their toughest games are gonna be the Rams, that Chiefs game. Yep. The Chargers. Um, yep. And the Bucks. Oh yeah. Other than that, I can see them winning most of these games. I, I I'm probably gonna go with 10, 10 and seven. Damn. Yeah, I I, 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 I can give them ten to seven. Because I mean you look at like I said, Seattle, I mean, unless somehow, you know, after the week two ass whooping they take. They have somehow put it together by week 15 and they get these quarterbacks together, then we'll see. But like I said, if Jimmy G is not the starting quarterback, then it, I'm if if Trey Lance is the starting QB coming into this season, I, I'm going to take and put five or six wins. But what do you think right now, though? Like if you had to go with your intuition right now, week one, do you – who do you think is going to start for the 49ers? If Jimmy, if Jimmy Garoppolo is on the roster. Do you think he will be? He's. Do I think he's going to be there? Yeah. No. Because they have you think to pay, they'll, you think they, they'll, have to pay, they have to pay Debo. And you're not. You think they'll either cut him or trade him? I think they. I, I think at. I think at some point, if they can't find a suitable team that's going to that's willing to give them. You know something. I I think that is going to be. I, I think it's going to. I don't. I don't think he's going to be there week one. I could be wrong, but I, I have a feeling that because they got to pay Debo, and, and and Debo wants to get paid. Okay, so right now you're leaning that it's going to be Trey Lance and Jimmy's not going to be on the team. Yeah, I, I'm one. leaning that way, but I'm going off the hypothetical that he is there. But in our actuality, I don't believe he's there. And I'm going to say I, I would definitely have to give them six six or seven wins. At best. With Trey Lance starting all 17 games. Yes, at least. I mean, because you can, you can beat the Commanders. You you can you can beat the you, you can beat the, the Raiders. They they beat themselves 90% of the time. Yeah. Uh, again, the Saints, you don't know what you're getting. Chicago, Seattle twice. I, I can see them six or seven wins. If Trey Lance is the starting QB, and he makes that leap like they're saying he's making, if they go with Trey Lance Week One, and they lose the first three games, let's say that's it. That's a done season. You think they bring in Jimmy, or do they stick with Trey Lance? It just depends on how. It just depends on how Trey Lance is playing. Now, if you're looking at it like he's playing like outstanding football and they're still losing games, no. But if he's playing horrible. Like he's he's you talking about multiple picks in each of these games? Yeah. By week four, if he's playing that bad, week four, Jimmy Garoppolo. If he's still on a roster, we'll be playing. Do you think George Kittle will play all 17 games? I feel like it'd be the first time in his career. I don't think so. And here's why is because they you there's a pattern. A lot of players who are centered around an offense, you look at guys like Calvin Johnson, Julio Jones, uh, Derrick Henry, 
Christian McCaffrey. Uh, what's the other kid, the dude, the, the guy's name from Minnesota? Uh, Delvin Cook. Delvin Cook. You look at those guys, and they take so much punishment because they are though they are their offense runs through them, yeah. and they don't make it through the season. You know, they That's get hurt, hamstrings, kiddo. Knees, ankles, like it, it, you know, Christian McCaffrey, he's notorious for it. Yeah. And at the end of the day, it's just, it's going to be is like, who's going to step up and help these guys? Who's going to take the pressure off of them? Because coming to the game, you, your eyes are on two people right now George Kittle and Debo Samuel. And, and that's really it. So if someone else can step up, like Brandon Ayuk, if he can come through and start making big plays and help. Down, stretch the defense and spread out the defense then they'll they'll make it but if i'm taking punishment yeah it's not gonna happen we're not gonna make it through the season and you know if you have a young quarterback who hasn't really shown us that he can take over just yet and you also have a tight end who is the focal point of your offense, who gets banged up quite often, may miss games, could be recipe for falling behind. Absolutely. And the thing is, with Trey Lance, it's more of like, can he take that big leap? Can he take that step forward and take over this offense just in case a guy like Kittle goes down? Right. Can he make sure he, he can still carry the team and they don't flounder and end up losing six games? This team is not deep at wide receiver. I mean, they have Juwan Jennings as their slot. So, Ooh. yeah, exactly. I don't know how many people are familiar, <laughs> but if if Ayuk doesn't step up and if Debo gets hurt, God forbid, he's been hurt before, but he he takes See, on the end of the season, roles. bro. He yeah. like I told you, he saved my season, but there was a lot of scares last year. Yeah. There was a lot, especially when he went down with the hamstring injury. I was like, oh my god, my season's over. <laughs> it was like I'm done. But it's it, – he – he they, they can't take that punishment constantly throughout 17 games. Someone's going to have to step up and make that leap forward. They did lose Raheem Mostert, but, I mean, the the 49ers the, – really the Kyle Shanahan system has just been about whoever is the running back is going to score points. So if Elijah Mitchell can stay healthy, you know, they'll be fine. But Raheem Mostert is gone, so that's just a name – to throw out there as someone who's gone for the 49ers, but it's, it's uh, defensively, what's that? I say it's gonna be, a, it's, it's, they're gonna have to figure it out. They got to figure it out. I mean, it's, it's a nice young stable between uh Mitchell and Trey Sermon, and uh, they brought on Tyr, Tyrion or Tyshawn Davis Price, something like that. So, mm-hmm. uh, another guy I think from LSU. So Nice little stable. So who again? Whoever plays running back for San Fran is going to score points. I'm more concerned about, you know, obviously they have Nick Bosa on defense. They still have Eric Armstead and some other guys. They, I think they even have uh, what did I put on here. Well, wait, did Nick Bosa get hurt last year in the playoff against oh, the Cowboys? Kamoko, that's right, Kamoko Ture. Because I remember he yeah he went out with a concussion, didn't he? Day, yeah, I think he did in the couple in the playoffs game against the Cowboys. I think he went down with the concussion. Yeah, so that's probably where they bring in Ture it makes a lot of sense because they realized without Bosa, the pass rush suffers uh, a lot. So, um, yeah, this this Niners team. I mean, it's- defensively, you, you like Fred Warner, you like Nick Bosa, you like Eric Armstead, uh, but. Jimmy Ward, hopefully he can become a household name again. It just becomes a little dicey compared to when you want to talk about these other teams and who they have on the back end. Especially when you're talking about this team. I think that's the only defense I think that's cursed with the bug injury, with the injury bug, (laughs) because it never fucking fails for them. Nonstop. I mean, it's crazy. Uh, I did like their second-round draft pick because they did not have a first-round draft pick. Uh, Drake Jackson, edge rusher out of USC, was a good pick for them. But here we are. We are talking about the defending Super Bowl champions, the Los Angeles Rams, formerly St. Louis Rams. Take me back to Kurt Warner and 
what the hell was his face? Uh, now I forget. But Kurt Warner, anyway. God, what the hell is that guy's name? It's going to drive me wild. Anyway. Marshall, what are you doing? Marshall Folger. Who? Folger. <laughs> Mark Bolger? You, uh, you pull that name out? How could I forget the Bolger in my pants? Jesus. But, uh, <laughs> that. anyway. Uh, the Rams of today, they they reside in Los Angeles. They're quarterbacked by Matthew Stafford. They went 12-5 and five last season, 7th offensively in points scored, 15th defensively. They made Aaron Donald the highest-paid defensive player in the league. I think yet again, this might be the second time he has been. Yeah, it's the but, uh, yeah, it's definitely second. That's well-deserved. <laughs> <laughs> they, they added Allen Robinson from the Bears through a trade. They acquired Bobby Wagner, a uh, free agent from the Seahawks, to man the middle of the defense, which was huge. Because they just they, got rid of Von Miller? Yeah, Von Miller they lost in free agency. He's with the Bills now, ironically, their uh, first opponent of the season. Too much but, money. <laughs> yeah, a lot of money for Von, especially late in his career. Good for him. <laughs> uh, but the Rams' first draft pick actually occurred in the third round of this year, so that was Logan Bruss, offensive lineman out of Wisconsin. Uh, as we know, the Rams don't really value – Draft picks as much as they just value defense or um talent. So they don't care, they don't care nothing about draft picks. Draft picks. Yeah, what's well, a draft pick? You know, let's get Matthew Stafford and Von Miller and see what happens. Jalen yeah. Ramsey and the like. It's like fucking draft picks. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair to the Rams, I know that's the storyline, but their two best players, maybe um, cons- arguably the two best players, Cooper Cup and Aaron Donald, were draft picks. So I'll give them that. Uh, anyways, they lost Robert Woods. Uh, Andrew Whitworth, I believe, played this past season. He's gone. Retired. Yeah, he, he has retired. Vaughn Miller's gone. And maybe a guy who not as many people know, but Sebastian Joseph Day, defensive lineman, is gone. He's with the Chargers now, I do believe. But he's a guy who did get a lot of pressure last season, even if he's not a household name. So. Uh, just kind of one name to throw out there. Wait, was it a safety? No, oh, that man. defensive lineman. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Because I, because I know that they had that one safety that he was like, dude, I like he just flashed every game. Like he made plays. Like he he didn't really have a big name, but he definitely made a name last year. Oh yeah, I think uh some like John Johnson, or, like some some real Something plain like that nature. Yeah, yeah, he he made, just, he's really good. Yeah, he definitely made some plays last year. But, uh, yeah, you look at this Rams team, obviously there's going to be like a certain success bias. You're going to want to think of every game as a win going into it. But, you know, first game of the season, they take on the Bills. It's a primetime game. I love that. That's a tough defense. Yes. And then they take on Atlanta the very next week, travel to Arizona week three, to uh, San Fran week four, at home against Dallas, and then at home against Carolina before their bye week. Week seven, so I think you could comfortably say, I could say five and one, four and one at best. Okay, at the, yeah, at the minimum, four and one. Oh, yeah, four and two, me, yeah. four and two at minimum, four and two. And yeah, I, I would like say, that. I would say the two would probably come from either the Falcons or the Niners, one of those two games, yeah. Uh, following their bye week. Eight, they take on San Francisco at home, travel to Tampa Bay That's versus awesome. Arizona at New Orleans at Kansas City versus oh. Seattle. So not so Jesus. So you go so you go to Tampa, you fly across country to Tampa. Yeah. Yes. Back across okay. country to Arizona. Oh no, Arizona come to you. So you fly back to California, then you gotta fly to New Orleans. Then go to Kent. That's that's tough. That is tough. That's that is tough. tough. And I'm very much looking forward to, particularly the first game against Buffalo, and that Week Nine game against uh, or at Bucks. Tampa Bay. Yeah. God. I just. I mean, if they if they resign OBJ, then they definitely gonna be a guarantee shooing for it, at least to run at the Super Bowl again. You think they're still thinking about that after Allen Robinson? I would. Why wouldn't you? If we if we can get him in, if we if come here, 
if we can get him in at a somewhat decent price, then yeah. I don't know. I just feel like yeah, you got Van Jefferson. Yeah, he's a he 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 made some big plays last year. But, I mean, you still got Cooper Cup. Uh, uh, listen, okay. Uh, what I will say, because that sounds ridiculous, right? I understand that a healthy Van Jefferson is not OBJ. in the same realm as a healthy OBJ. I'll give you that, but OBJ has rarely been healthy. So right, right, right. Yeah, yeah what two? He had two torn ACLs in the last two years. God damn, dude. Yeah. So, um, it's, yeah. it, they're going to be an interesting team. I mean, after the bye week, it gets kind of rough. I love that uh, they're – I don't understand how they're – I'm looking at these ticket prices. Week 8 against San Fran, 120. And then you get to watch Matt Stafford against Tom Brady for 50 bucks. Because it's a divisional game, that's why it's more important. All right, All right. So right. but game. then you have thirty-four for Arizona. <laughs> this makes no sense. I think the San, I think the San Fran game is a rivalry game because it's the same. It's like it's a California team versus California team, so I think it's kind of a rivalry there. So I think that's why that one's well, no, because Green Bay is one hundred and fifty. Yeah, well, I mean, my rivalry. God, I mean Vegas is one hundred and eighty-one. <laughs> well, that's what Lambo is charging, and that's what. Ooh. Well, then, yeah, I guess I'm looking at it. I'm really seeing a pattern. It's a California <laughs> thing. It's, it's a so California. Crazy. Well, no, because they're in Vegas. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know why. They, I don't know how they make these damn prices. <laughs> I don't know at this point. Crazy. But it's it, it's it's this. I, I'm 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 kind of excited for this season. Me personally, what makes me more excited for is that. We had a quick rebuild. That's what I'm kind of interested for. I'm kind of interested to see how we, how our quarterbacks play, how our our newly acquired receivers play. Because we went big on receivers. Like, are you talking we, Atlanta? Yeah, we went. Okay. We went tall. We went for height. Like, I think I think our shortest guy is like six four. Well, I want, we can get into Atlanta for sure. Do, do you think the Rams are going to repeat again as NFC West champions? Yes. Okay. Even with Matthew Stafford throwing as many damn interceptions that he threw last year, they still ended up getting to the Super Bowl? Yes. I, I do believe that they can win the division again. Do I think they can repeat? Eh, that, that's going to be tough. It's, it's going to be tough. He, People who want to be like, oh... Detroit really fucked Matthew Stafford. You know, they never did this. They never like he had arguably the best peep there are people, and rightfully so, who will argue that Calvin Johnson is the best wide receiver in NFL history. So to say that Detroit uh, I'm just saying he's up there in the conversation. He's up there, but I mean yeah. I think if so to say that Matt Stafford never had any help, you're you're just being you're not being genuine. He he had to help. The issue was he never had a good offensive line. Matthew Stafford, Matthew Stafford, it was playing quarterback for Detroit for Matthew Stafford was like walking into a uh what, what's those what's those little derbies, those little crash derbies. That's what it was like for him. It, it, that's what it was like for him. Like it, every Sunday, yeah, he had the weapons, he had help, but he was constantly getting beat. He was constantly getting hit. Like, he sustained so many injuries. There's a reason why they call him one of the toughest men in the NFL. This man took a beating and was able to get up and keep playing. Like, I personally would have laid down at one point and be like, go fuck yourself. I'm done. Don't I believe me uh, here. I would have to look back at the coaches. I think that him Jim being Ford, paired with Sean McVay – is is probably the biggest part. Like, Absolutely. I don't know if there was ever someone in Detroit that was as offensively talented as Sean McVay. Let's see. I think on the, I think on while Stafford from Stafford's first year to his last year, he had Jim Schwartz. Then right. He had defensive um, guy. Yeah. Who's the other guy that they had? The black guy. I can't think of his name. But he was there, and he didn't yep. last very long. I and know. Now after, that I actually have to think of his name. I can't think of it. And then Caldwell. after, yeah, Jim Caldwell was there. 
And then who else? Who was at the Jim Caldwell? Oh, uh, Matt uh, Patricia. Yeah. Okay. So Matt Patricia, a defensive minded guy, was there. That's yeah, so all. I mean, really. And then now you got the guy who bite kneecaps, who's another <laughs> defensive minded guy. Who, well, he's a tight end, but yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. He he just I don't think he just he just never had it. And then he gets in he gets with Sean McVay, which is a match made in heaven. Right. And you get guys like Cooper Cup, uh, Robert Woods. You got Woods. Donald. You got Ramsey. Yeah. So you and you get then you get a great defense. He's yeah. never had a good defense. Yeah. He's never well, had. So, so what, we think they are going to be the West champs again, probably, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I don't. I don't see anyone dethroning him. For, no, I do want to. I do want to dig into Atlanta a little bit. So let's do that. Let's talk Atlanta. Um, like I said, I'm excited from what I'm seeing. Like this is a rebuild year, and a lot of the pieces that they brought in. This was. I'm gonna say this was like a soft rebuild. Like, because you ain't got a guy like Marcus Mariota, who I feel like can still play the game. He can still throw the ball. He can still be accurate. And you surround him with enough weapons with guys who can catch the ball. You got, uh, you know what? I'm about tired of forgetting these people's names right now. So they, they drafted Drake London. Drake London. You have Zacchaeus. Kyle Pitts. Don't do this. Stop doing that. I hate when you bring that kid's name up. Take his. He's a starter. <laughs> Olamata is a kiss. No. That's he, his name. He doesn't have Holland, a nickname. Holland he's Olamata OZ. Holland, he's the Holland, Oz. How and why he's still on the roster blows my mind. He's Olamata is a kiss. How and why he's still on the roster, I don't, I, I don't know. I, I he's don't big know. and fast. Yeah, no, he's not. He, no, I'm sorry. Let's not don't do that. Then we signed Brian Edwards. I like I like that sign Tate Auden like all the like all these guys Allison Geronimo or is it yeah yeah the names are backwards they got Geronimo Allison yeah yeah Geronimo Allison I'm sorry all of but all these guys that we brought in were tall they were big guys so I they think, are big guys yeah because you look at Demir Bird it's very I, Arthur Smith because he had AJ Brown and Julio Jones right and Frank Darby I think Frank Darby needs. Frank Darby was a guy that I kind of had an interest in last year when we drafted him because I'm like, he's a big guy. He can play opposite of Julio. Obviously, Julio didn't stay. And I was like, oh, he can play opposite of Ridley. And then Ridley had his frantic breakdown and stupidity. So I, I think I think this is going to be – we're going to see them. They're going to play with the offense. It's here's not what, be, Huh? Here's what's interesting about the Falcons is these guys have never all been healthy at the same time. No. And you have a first-round pick at right tackle, a first-round pick at right guard, a third-round pick at center, a third-round pick at left guard, and a first-round pick at left tackle. So this should be on, can I be honest? Can I be honest? from what you draft, one of the better lines in the league. Can I, can I be honest? I hate Jalen Mayfield. I'd be upset if you were anything but. I hate Jalen Mayfield. Why is that? Because he got Ryan ass whipped so much last year. <laughs> he was a rookie. He it, what bothered me the most is he came in with his confidence. If you want your quarterback protected, no. What bothered me the most no. was he came with confidence. Well, you should set your ass down. Like this man got beat so much. Was a block year. with your head down and your tail between your legs. It's like it's like. <laughs> He 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 went and ran his mile. I was just like, I really hope he takes a step forward this year because uh, we gonna need it. <laughs> but my the biggest concern for me right now is Matt Hennessy because we we lost Alex Mack last year. Really? Yeah. Okay. We lost Alex Mack, and um, so it, it's it's hard to it's hard to fill those shoes. Like he was a great center, and right. then Ryan had that connection. So you know. These guys all got to rebuild connections with whoever's going to be the starting QB. And what he's looking is looking at Marcus Mariota is going to be that guy. Um, From what I remember, just because I'm a Eagles fan, so I see a lot of Temple stuff, Matt Hennessy was highly regarded as a Temple center. So we'll see. I, I said, like I said, they're going to have to. Have you seen him play game. yet or no? No. Okay. We're going to have to build that chemistry real fast and they're going right. to get together. Um, but again, like I said, since we saw since Ryan Pace came in as 
you know, he's in our front office. We've gotten a lot of uh, Chicago guys. So, and yeah. I, the biggest signing was had to have been Eddie Goldman. Eddie Goldman had to have been the biggest signing we got this season. And I'm excited uh, for it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like Casey Hayward quite a bit. I like the I like the experience on the back end. Yeah, we needed it. We definitely need the help. And like I said, we got Isaiah Oliver. He tore his ACL last year, so he's looking healthy. Um, you know, I think that I think at this point this season they're going to play with the they're going to play with the defense. They're going to play with the offense until we can figure out what we can do correctly. Because um, I've seen I've seen videos with Felipe Franks at tight end. Um, really? You know, yeah. I've seen him at tight end. Uh, you know, we st- this kid right here, Tyler Ergier. I heard like I've based off his you know his stats and his film. He's a strong runner. He's he's one of those guys you don't want to be in front of. He's a big guy. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So yeah. I'm I'm kind of hoping that you know him and Cardell Patterson kind of like split, you know, touches. You know, Cardell Patterson doesn't have to take the brunt of what he what he took last year. So, you know, that hopefully he'll come in and step in. Then we got Damian Williams for another Chicago. That's guy. to me, that's the wild card because he can do, I think, anyway, he can do pretty much anything Patterson can, and he's more of a pure running back. Yeah. So we'll see how he works in the, in the mix. It's, it's like I said, it's this season, there's a little excitement there. It not as not so much as like, oh, we might make the playoffs. It's, it's more of like, the Mario is gonna wear number one. Yeah. Hmm. And my my thing is is you know who's gonna be starting QB in the beginning of the season. Oh, uh, I've, I've, Tate I've seen, number eight. That's interesting. That's I, I've seen them say you know uh, Marcus Mario is, is like he's ahead of Desmond Ritter, but they're saying like he Desmond Ritter's ahead of like all of the rookie QBs this season. So um, I don't know. It's gonna be tough. It's gonna be it's gonna be a fun season, but. I'm not really holding my breath as far as like making playoffs. Yeah, I think none of these guys, whether you're talking Edwards, London, Zacchaeus, none of them are burners. No, not at all. Uh, so each and every series is going to be a grind. It's going to be 10 yards at a time. It's going to be run game. Can Marcus Mariota scramble for four yards and then pass for four yards and then run for two yards. And like, unfortunately, uh, I've, I've seen those, I've seen those offenses for the Eagles and it's not fun to watch, but that's just the way it is going to be. Yeah. And then, you know, that's just something, you know, we're going to have to get used to because I'm in London. He, he, I think he ran four or five at, at the combine. So right. we, we're not going to, well, we're, we're not going to beat you deep, but what right. we're going to do, we're going to jump over your head. That's what we're gonna do. We, we, we're and gonna get the stuff, 50, 50 balls. Yeah, and hopefully, like grind it out, like just wear you down with the play action and read option and things like that. Yeah, absolutely. And like I said, this is gonna be the first year since Michael Vick we've had mobile QBs. And again, whether it's Dean Pease or Ryan Pace, I mean, I really, uh, I'm no expert, right? So who cares what I say? But I was a huge Ebicady fan out of Penn State. Really like D'Angelo Malone and the bend that he had out of Western Kentucky. Troy Anderson can do a lot of things: linebacker, running he, back. I, I can't mean, wait to see. I can't yeah. wait to see him play. I really can't because, like, he did everything. I cannot wait to see him play. Exactly. So, who's ever making these defensive decisions? I think, anyway, is on the right track. It's, it's like I said. It's, it's one of those seasons. This is probably. I'm more excited to see how we build that chemistry throughout the throughout the season that's what that's that's what i want to see that's what i'm i'm excited for is that seeing if we can if we can tie some wins together you know whether it be two or three wins you know a two three win streak something like that and we can see that we there everyone's picking up the offense and you know what the hell they're supposed to be doing and it's a great question i mean as far as chemistry goes like who is the leader i've never known marcus mariota to be a vocal guy at you this know, point, so, it's Jake Matthews. Right. Is it Jake Matthews? Yeah. I mean, it's, defensively. It's Jake Matthews you know, and, Jay, and Grady Jarrett. That's that's who it is. It's Grady right. Jarrett and, J, and Jake Matthews. They're, they're, Jake Matthews is the most tenured Falcon right now at the moment on the okay. roster. 
Gotcha. So <laughs> that says a lot. If your offensive, if he's the most tenured player right now, so it's it's going to be it's going to be interesting. It's going to be an interesting year. So, what are you? Uh, more than five wins, less than five wins. I think I think I gave him. I think I gave him five, five or six wins. Five on the dot. Yeah, I think five, I, I, I officially, I'm gonna say officially five, possibly six, but five is my final answer. So it's just based on it. Just for me, it's just like I don't see us making going from like worst to first in this. I think it's gonna take another year or so. When I have been doing mock drafts for fantasy football, usually. Patterson's there in the fourth when I want to draft a running back. Would you say that Cordero is going to last the entire season as a starting running back, or do you think Algier takes over at some if point? If Algier takes that step forward, and we're going to see, and this is all this stuff is going to play out in the preseason. We're going to see all this shit play out in the preseason. Right. So we're going to be able to see if can he grasp the con, can he grasp the playbook quickly, and can he run and protect the ball? That's really it. So um, at this point, I think, think, it's, be, I, think, I, think it's, I think it's gonna be Patterson, but I, I think it's gonna be I think at some point if if he if this rookie takes if he gets you know a hold of playbook and he can run and protect the ball, I think they're gonna start to split the uh, touches between him and Patterson. Last year, Kyle Pitts had over one thousand receiving yards. Yeah, but he didn't and he had. Run. Zero touchdowns. Yeah, that's that's bullshit. I don't I don't care if you go over a thousand yards, but if you get, you can go over a thousand yards and you have zero touchdowns, that's that's a, that's an incomplete season for me. Like what how many you how many touchdowns are you predicting this year? I need him to get at least six. Is that what you're predicting? I'm a, honestly I, I think because he know because he knows the offense and he's probably the most tenured pass catcher outside of your favorite person to mention. I, I think he's going to get a lot of attention. Um, Olamide Zacchaeus is an untapped talent. And we're going to see it in 2022. No, he's not. He's not untapped. No, he's not. He, he, no, he, he just got lucky a couple times to be <laughs> some shit nickel corner. No, sorry. Uh, it's going to, um, I, like I said, I say six, seven would be a great year. But I think six. I think six receiving touchdowns would be good for him. Um, we need. We need. We need that production. Like I don't care if you if you catch fifteen hundred yards and you have no touchdowns. What did you really do? You just running. You just running from end zone to end zone. That's all you were doing, honestly. So I, I need touchdowns. I need you. I I'd rather him go for nine hundred yards and five touchdowns. I'm okay with that. I'm, I'm okay if you don't go over a thousand and you got five or six touchdowns. I'm okay with that. So, guys, you heard it here first. If you plan on drafting Kyle Pitts this season, you can expect 900 yards and six touchdowns. Nate says it so. This has been a pretty awesome episode. I'm not going to lie. We're almost two hours in. Uh, I can't believe I thought we could cram two divisions in tonight. We only did one. So come back next week. We're going to do my favorite division. The reason that we saved it for last. The AFC West. We got the Broncos. We got the Chargers. Chiefs. And we got the Raiders. And this week, you know what? TJ couldn't be here. He's on call. He's a working man. He's got things to do. Maybe he'll be here next week. I don't know. But if you're here next week, that's all that matters. We need the MF for here. We need your support. We need you to share this, like this, follow us. I've never begged before, and I'm not going to start now. So <laughs> that's that. But I will say, I appreciate any support. Nate, you look fantastic tonight. Thank you, sir. The glasses, the outfit, time point. <laughs> I feel like I'm wearing pajamas compared to you. Uh... You know, I'll just down a little bit next week. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> uh, again, we're talking AFC West next week. Who knows what news will pop up? I really appreciate Nate for being here. I appreciate all of you. 
the daughter had her first birthday. Nate's beautiful daughter wanted to say hello and hello to her. Just be a dad will be back in, I think, about over... It's a month and a half. Okay. Perfect. So until then, MFers, come back every Monday, 9.30. We'll be here. I love you. Nate loves you. And we'll see you next time.